Well, welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video, we're going to look at a problem from the 2008 AIM. And this is a good problem involving uh, some clever factoring methods. So let's take a look at what we have. There exists unique positive integers x and y that satisfy the equation x squared plus 84x plus 2008 is equal to y squared. Find x plus y. So again, this is an integer equation. And uh, since we know that this equation is in fact true, we're going to look for some method of trying to factor it. And one thing that occurs to me whenever I see a lot of square terms and a linear terms is that uh, there's usually an opportunity to complete the square, and that often helps uh, reduce the problem into a more manageable form. So let's go ahead and do that. We have the x squared plus 84x. We can complete the square as x squared plus 84x plus 1 half this squared. And now this 42 squared, we want to write that out as 1764 and subtract it from the 208 for the balance of 244 and we have that equal to y squared. Now we can uh, factor this as a square of x plus 42 squared plus 244 is equal to the y squared and now we see another opportunity to create a factor group so let's bring the 244 to the right the y squared to the left will multiply each side by negative 1, and we're left with y squared minus x plus 42 squared is equal to 244. And this looks very promising now because now we have the, the difference between two squares that we know we can factor one additional time. We have a number on the right side that we can break up into its prime factorization. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y minus the x plus 42, so that's uh, y minus x minus 42 times the sum y plus x plus 42 is equal to 244 which we now write in prime factorization form so you can pull out a factor of 2 another factor of 2 and then you're left with uh, 2 squared times 61 and let me just write that as a kind of a string of 2's times 61 and at this point, let's go ahead and examine these factors on the left. Uh, they're very suggestive of a form that we, we've probably come across before, a form such as uh, y minus x times y plus x. And this factor group has the following property that we're going to discover here, in that when we try to examine the uh, parity possibilities, you know, how the even and odd uh, forms of these uh, terms can, can match up, we realize that uh, there's only four possibilities, of course. We can have either even, odd, odd, even, even, times an even, or an odd, times an odd. But what we realize is that for, any, for whatever values of x and y that will provide an even number on this left term, those same numbers will provide an even number on the right term. And likewise, any combination of x and y that would create an odd number on the left side would also create an odd number on the right side. So we know that these two numbers have to be of the same parity. They can either be even-even or odd-odd. They cannot be even-odd. They cannot be odd-even. So we can eliminate these two from possibilities here. So we're left with the possibilities that these two factors can be of the form even-even or odd-odd, and we often describe that as uh, the same parity. And now we have to see how these two possibilities can match up with the uh, possible factor groups on the right side of the equation. And what we notice is that since we have factors of 2 on the right side of the equation, that no matter how we break up the right side of this equation, we're always going to end up with a factor group that contains at least one even number. And so from that observation, we know that we can't possibly juggle the right-hand factors in any way to create an odd-odd factor group. So what we're left with is an even-even factor group that has to match up with some kind of even-even factor group on the right. And once we notice that, we realize that uh, there are various ways we can break, break up this factor group into these three pieces here. We can also flip the, uh, the order of the smaller and the larger. We know that from uh, the realization that this 2 to the squared times 61 to the first will give us 2 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 total factors and that's equal to 6. Uh, here we show only 3, but again we get an extra factor of 2 because we can switch the arrangement of the smaller and the larger factor. But for our purposes, we really just care about how the evens can match up with uh, some combination of even factors on the right side. And what we basically notice then is that in order to get an even times an even, 
we must break up this uh, 2 squared uh, so that one factor of 2 goes to one side and another factor of 2 goes to the other side. That's the only way that we can basically construct uh, two factors which are even and even. So essentially we have to break up this factor group into something of the form 2 times 2 times 61. And that's the only way to construct an even-even factor pair. And from there, it's actually very simple to proceed because we have a smaller number and a larger number to form this factor pair. And it's pretty obvious that the smaller number has to correspond to the case where the, uh, the negative signs appear in the terms. And the larger has to correspond to the case where the, uh, the term is only consisting of, of positive and uh, plus signs. So from that, we know that the assignment x plus y plus 42 has to match up to the second factor, from which we then know that x plus y uh, is equal to 2 times 61 is 122 minus the 42 will give us a final number of 80. So anyway, it's a good problem. Lots of interesting skills and techniques here that we've talked about before. Anyway, take care. Bye.